We're going to be uh, talking about information theory um, and a specific concept called Shannon entropy, named after Claude Shannon. He was a, a great computer scientist right there at the beginning of the field. But today we're going to talk about his most important contribution, which is information theory. So a lot of concepts in computer science are directly derived from this more general theoretic concept. Uh, things like uh, compression, zip files, um, network error correction codes or error detection codes, things like that are all directly related to information theory. Now, the simplest experiment that you can do that involves probability is flipping a coin. So I have a penny here and I'm going to flip it. And I'm going to ask you to make a prediction. Is it going to be heads or tails? People say tails never fails, but I'm going for heads just for, to be Heads, crazy. all right. I'm going to have a quick peek here. Now, if I told you it was heads, how surprised would you be? A bit. Just one bit. One, one bit, yes. One bit, that's, that's exactly right. One bit, and you are now one bit surprised. Ooh. It is heads. <laughs> um, so what if instead I'm going to flip two coins, right? Um, and I'm going to flip them in order, let them land here. Uh, but I'll ask you to make a prediction. Um, the coin on the left will be heads or tails. I'll go heads for that one. Heads and the one on the right. Let's be crazy and say tails. Tails. Okay. Coin one and coin two. Oh, is that a tails? I can't show where that is. So yeah. they're both tails. Oh. How surprised would you have been if your prediction was completely right? Um, a bit, a bit more. That's right, one bit more. Um, so obviously there's a relationship between coin flips and bits. I kind of gave it away. Um, but let's uh, talk a little bit about the mathematics behind it. So obviously the larger a probability is, the less surprised you are by the outcome. And the smaller a probability is, the more surprised you would be if the outcome happens. Um, and... Yeah, you see that on lottery winners' faces. You see that on lot... <laughs> well, it's a good thing you brought it up. So, we'll talk about the lottery in one minute. Um, so let's come up with a sort of reasonable formula to, to uh, express the amount of surprise that you have with a certain outcome. So the symbol that is used for that is the capital letter I. The I stands for information, but we'll talk about why that is later. Uh, for now it means surprisal. And the surprisal of some event E is equal to the logarithm of 1 over the probability that E happens. So why do we take 1 over the probability of E? Well, because we're saying the less likely it is, the more surprised we are, right? So a one in a million thing surprises us quite a bit more than a one in two thing. So whatever is below the divisor is what we're interested in. So that's why we're taking the inverse. Why do we take the logarithm? So the logarithm is a function which has diminishing returns. So if we're looking at the probability as an odds thing, so 1 in 2 is an odd of 2, 1 in 10 is odds of 10, right? The smaller the probability gets, uh, the larger the odds get. Uh, but the idea is that if you double the odds, you only increase the logarithm by 1. So you want this diminishing return of surprisal, and that's why we use the logarithm. So every time you halve the probability, you only increase the amount you're surprised by, by literally a bit. Otherwise, if you got to a million, you would be, yeah, off the scale. Right? It, would, it would go off the scale way too quickly. Uh, so that's why we're taking the logarithm. Um, so one in a million and one in two million are sort of comparable in the amount uh, that it would surprise us. So this formula makes sense for coin flips. And what we can do, of course, is we can plug in the numbers. So let's do exactly that. So the event here that we have was um, heads, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for a single coin flip. So we're talking about the information content of a single coin flip being heads, which is equal to the logarithm of 1 over the probability. Now what is the probability? The probability is a half. And this, in other words, is just log of 2. 
In computer science, contrary to mathematics, when we write down the logarithm, we usually mean the logarithm base 2. So you can put a little 2 here, but when we omit it in computer science, we mean 2. If we want to have the natural logarithm, we would write something else. A base 10 logarithm, we would put a little 10 there. If there's nothing there, log 2. So the log 2 of 2 is, of course, 1. And the quantity, the unit, is bit. So it's one bit of surprisal. And similarly, if we plug in the double coin flip, your prediction, if I'm not mistaken, was heads and tails. Yeah. And the probability of that being right is, of course, 1 in 4. So we get the logarithm of 1 over 0 0.25, which is, of course, log 4, which is 2 bits. So you're one bit surprised versus two bits surprised. This works nicely for coin flips because all outcomes are sort of equally likely. Uh, but what happens in the case that not all events are equally likely? So you have an unbiased coin, they're equally likely. You have a biased coin, they're different. Let's take an extreme example of, um, of a biased event, winning the lottery. Right? There's a tiny, 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 tiny chance that you win the jackpot and there is a very big chance that you don't win the jackpot. Keep it simple. Let's say that there's a one in billion chance you win the jackpot. And when I say a billion, I of course mean two to the power 30, which is roughly a billion, as most computer scientists will know. So we have two events. You either win the lottery or you don't. Now, if you win the lottery, you'd be very, very surprised. Right, so let's plug that in. I'd be extremely surprised since I've not bought a ticket in, I don't know how long. So. <laughs> I don't think it changes the probability that much, does it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's call the event winning W. So that is log 1 over 1 over 2 to the power 30, so 2 to the power minus 30. And this is, of course, equal to log 2 to the power 30, which is 30 bits. So if it happens, you'd be extremely surprised. But if it doesn't happen, you're not surprised at all, right? So the probability of not winning, so losing, is log 1 over. And then we get, well, a tiny number. Let's just write it as 1 minus 2 to the power minus 30. And that is roughly 0 0.000. .000 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 3, 4 bits. So I think it's safe to say you wouldn't be surprised even a single bit. So what does this really mean? Um, what is more surprising on average? Flipping a coin, where both events are not very surprising, or the lottery, where we have one very surprising result, and one completely unsurprising result. And this is the core idea of information theory. So this is how a notion called entropy is defined. It uses the letter H. And what you do is you take the event, so let's say P for postcode lottery, because we've used the L for losing. Pretty much the same thing, to be honest. We take the probability of the event, which is a tiny probability, uh, that's the probability that you win, and if you win, you're 30-bit surprised. If you lose, which happens the rest of the time, so that is 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power 30, you're basically not surprised at all. So this tiny quantity in bits. And this gives you the expected amount of surprisal. And as you can imagine, this formula basically simplifies to a tiny number, right? Because this number will be tiny, this number will be tiny, the sum of two tiny numbers is a tiny number. So actually, the most surprised we can get with a event that only has two outcomes is actually flipping a coin, which is one bit surprisal. As soon as you introduce a bias, the amount of surprisal goes down. Let's link this back to computer science, the notion of information theory, right? Uh, so what I'm claiming is that what we're computing here is what information is. Um, if I want to tell you the result of a coin flip, what is the best way I can do it? 
zero one. Zero one. So we need one bit to give you the result of a coin flip. If I want to give you the outcome of a single lottery, I'm still going to have to use one bit, a zero for losing and a one for winning. However, it says here that we need fewer than one bits. What does that mean? Well, let's say that you play the lottery for a whole year and I want to communicate to you the results over the whole year. What I could do is I agree with you that if I send you zero for the whole year, it means you've lost every single time. And if you did win one of them in the unlikely event that that happens, I'll do a one followed by an integer uh, that is the first time you won the lottery that year and then repeating that coding in case that there's another win even less likely right um, so there's a tiny tiny chance that we'll use more than one bit and a very big chance that we use exactly one bit so on average we're going to use about one in 365 bits per day now that is still a bigger number than this but what this is saying is that if you do this experiment infinitely often and you come up with the smartest best scheme that you can possibly come up with you're still going to have to use at least this many bids per lottery you can never do better than this on average is what it's saying this is like the absolute uh, optimized to its absolute kind of yeah exactly and you can imagine that this is something that computer scientists are very interested in because if you want to um, uh, uh, compress a file and you know how much entropy there is in that type of file you know you cannot on average do better than a certain amount you can stop searching once you found it same thing with error correction codes if you know um, the throughput in bits of a channel so an electrical wire you know that there's no smart way of putting more information through it than whatever that number is. And that's why information theory is so important for computer science. There's the crystal. It's vibrating, but only just. You know where it is, it's not moving. High entropy is when the probabilities are smeared out. You don't know where it is. So by the time you get a gas... It's a bit easier to find what the factorization is. And then, once you've factored it, you can just do these steps to completely recalculate the private key.